Um, let's press record. Okay. And we're going. What are they paying you at the creek in the cave? <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Only a joke. Wait, so Beth Stelling is with us. Oh, wait, we started like that? Beloved child. Well, okay. <laughs> and f- friend. Oh, we're start- we started. Yeah. Well, welcome <laughs> to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm Moshe Kasher. That's Natasha Legero, and she just introduced our guest. Hi. Hi, Beth. Thank you for having me. <laughs> nice to Beth, see you. Beth, you've been on tour. What's it like out there in in the wild? People are excited to be out and ready to, to laugh. I feel like most of the places I'm at do still maybe require a Vax card, but you'll have a few sneakers in there. Like, I love a sneaker. <laughs> good to be back. <laughs> I, I feel like the two times I've been out in public recently, I've gotten into a fight about um, someone butting in line. You got really <laughs> traumatized that by getting That happened to me twice. No, I'm just saying. I don't like, like it one bit. You know, I, I, I also wish... People wouldn't stand so close to me. As, you think yeah. it would have really been imprinted on us? But I, are people overcorrecting here? What do they say? Close. We've been saying, read the globe. Guess what I did one time when what? somebody was too close. I just kicked. I kicked back my leg to do a quad stretch. <laughs> <laughs> did it work? <laughs> they got pissed. That was so funny. I was like, Wait, "Oh, what? I didn't see you." They acted like I had like completely slapped them across the face. <laughs> Wait, where? What were you in line for? Um, I was, and I'm not proud of this, and I don't support their business, and it's disgusting. But coffee bean and tea leaf. <laughs> Wait, you don't support their business? <laughs> no, they're freaking gross <laughs> as hell. What did they? Are oh, they yeah, an example with, of what script are you working on? <laughs> <laughs> You're more of a Starbucks gal. Ew! I can't. Do you even know me? No, oh I mean, oh my I, god, what, Moshe. I didn't know you were like a coffee snob. <laughs> okay, I am. <laughs> okay, and I my first job out here was intelligentsia. Is that true? Yes. Oh. Do you know what? Much, do you know how many dishes I had to wash before I was even allowed to touch milk there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please. intelligentsia is the kind of place that will te- treat you like absolute scum if you don't know what a Rwandan coffee <laughs> tastes like. <laughs> but, and, <laughs> and you're so friendly. They they were never friendly. They Trust must not have liked that. that. It's coming right back to me. I was a cunt sometimes. Oh, you were? You were oh, snobby? Oh, yeah. I, you know what? In fact, your shift shouldn't be determined on hours. It should be determined on how many times you've said, hi, how can I help you? Or hi, what can I get for you? They should pay you per high? There's a saturation high? point, and it's over for everyone. That's why I'm so sympathetic to the police. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're doing their best and they just, what are they, you know, they're dealing with crooks. I was a butthole to people. And oh, it's, really? come, it's come back to me occasionally. It, I what? just visited Intelligentsia, which has now been sold and it's not even as good as it used to be. But when I was there, you had to like pass 17 tests, like I said. <gasps> Take a breath. Yeah. So I went to Chicago and I went to the Intelligentsia down there after I went to the Art Institute and I ordered a drink. Were you doing a snob tour of, of Chicago? <laughs> Art Institute, yeah. the, the Brie Society. I stopped into Barney's. Is that still open? <laughs> um, and the, anyway, so I ordered a pour over, which does take a few minutes. And But when you're the barista, sometimes you forget. Okay, that just does happen. So I'm sitting there, I'm waiting, and I walk up, I don't even know, seven minutes later, I was like, it's done, or they forgot about it. And if they forgot about it, then I'm gonna not have to reset on that, which should be about four minutes, okay? So I was like, hey, I ordered that. And right away, the barista goes, yeah, they take five to seven minutes. And I go, (laughs) I know, I used to work here. And he goes, what location? (laughs) I'm standing in Chicago. So of course they probably didn't like me because I was like, Pasadena and Silver Lake. Funny. (laughs) But I know you had to pass a test to know all the locations. By the way, there's there's a place here in our neighborhood. Beth, you live in our neighborhood, right? Yeah. There's a place here in our neighborhood that opened about six months to a year before the the pandemic. Standing mm-hmm. egg. It's called Standing Egg Coffee. Guys, that's been open for longer. They than do that. not serve eggs. <laughs> Guys, and that when, was open before that. And when the pandemic hit, I was so scared for Standing Egg. I was like, "There's no way Standing Egg will, will be standing." <laughs> at the, no way it has at, legs. At the end, there's no way it's got legs at the end of this pandemic. And you know what? I walked by there the other day. Standing egg, they're still rolling. <laughs> standing tall. They're standing tall. I went over in there. Hard. They, they're still. I was very proud of them. I went. I got a pour over myself. Okay. Wait. I have a question for you, Beth. Um. So, are you? Since you're kind of a coffee snob, what's your coffee game in the morning? And what should we? What should mm. we? Should we be doing pour over? What should we be doing? Well, you know, I go back and forth, so I have all the options. I will say, intelligentsia scared me so much that I didn't make coffee at home for years because I thought I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> Uh, because they didn't have all the tools, the scales, the grinder, the kettles, but you got a good discount. So I started collecting the things I would need. And the truth is, I mean, it's just, it's bean water. You could throw some (laughs) freaking, you know, sawdust in there and it'd be fine. Like, it's not that hard to make it. So you can't really mess it up. Natasha, Um, her strategy is half a pound per 
I, I make it really strong. Do, am I, or is my coffee too strong? It's unnecessarily strong. I love it really strong. I'd love to taste it. Are and you then, the person that likes like a rubbery or tar taste? I do. Because like I'm from the so Bay Area. Like that's, dark, how we, that's how we do well, it. Basically over roasted. That over roasted. Yeah. yeah. Greasy looking bean. You know, I did not know that this was going to be the topic of tonight's podcast. <laughs> I'm not ready. Okay, I, can I, I, we can move on, but no, I do have two I, things to add. Let's, let's lean in. Um, t- Within the last week, two people I trained on espresso have either been in the same city with me or at my show or involved in comedy or commented to me interesting because i trained the ucb baristas when they were trying to do that oh when they did the uh the old uh Wait. super successful experiment down yeah, on the sunset experiment at sunset one more question yeah um do you heat your milk before you put it in your coffee because i feel like i'm always drinking cold coffee so i am a black coffee drinker if yeah i am gonna do because you're a grown up yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to do milk though, and you will like this, if you like, I don't know what you guys have. If your Breville has like a little, like, s- we don't have a steamer. Okay. Well, you could get a steamer <laughs> or you could get one of those little wa- wands that like warms it up because uh, when you warm up the milk, it makes it a little sweeter. So that's why Ooh. people like Cafe Au Lait. You know, this reminds me of like that. the classic SNL sketch, Coffee okay. Talk. Listen, coffee I just talk. wanted to get no, from an I like expert. It. Let's, yeah. let's, Wait, but before, I see what you mean. And then, you know what I've also purchased? Mm. Some of them work, some of them don't. Is either the ember, like mugs that stay hot or mm-hmm. like the ones that you put your um, mug Ooh, or the like coaster this. that keeps it warm. Did I ever tell Ooh, you about? Ooh, I don't know about this. One of the great. I can know what to get for your birthday that just happened and I missed. One of the great <laughs> clips online that I've ever seen is a man announcing at a a competitive food eating contest he's bringing the contestants up yeah. and this old man in like one of those um river river boat hats those like foam hats what you know the white ones wait i'm trying to think what you mean and like a green sports coat you know those what barbershop quartet type of hat uh the flat brim come okay. on you yeah. know what i'm talking about right mm-hmm. do you? i think i do now barbershop like, quartet yeah yeah and he's got like a green sports coat on and an ascot and he is introducing all the contestants and he says when we are young we drink our coffee with milk and sugar. Then, then with only milk, then black, then decaf, then we die. I love that. I thought that was some of the the deepest. Now, where was that guy? Because I lost, after my mind went elsewhere. I started thinking of the music man and those hats. <laughs> it was at Coney Island. Okay. He was introducing people at a hot dog ah, eating the contest. Hot dog. Yes. That doesn't surprise me. I like having a coffee at dessert. But yes, decaf will happen, for, come for all of us. I'm not doing that. I'd rather die. I'd rather die before. You will die of a heart attack from all that caffeine. Mm, probably from all this nicotine that I'm sucking on. Ooh, a little s- poucher. He puts yeah. these pouches in. Have you ever tried them? Uh, um, I I don't think I've tried one of them. Oh. I know there's like snus. They're disgusting. Yeah, what are you gonna do? But uh, you weren't. Uh, never mind. I'm trying to think. I guess after parties, maybe we shared a cigarette or something. Yeah, we used to be cool. Remember those days, Tosh? Yeah. Tosh and I, our romance is all based around cigarettes. I mean, I do. Ever since COVID, I haven't thought about it or wanted one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I used to love one with a drink. Didn't COVID really put smoking into perspective? It did. It was just like, I'm not trying to fuck with my lungs ever again. Yeah. Ah, uh, interesting. That's, it just totally shifted my mindset. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Anyway, um, I do want to make you coffee sometime. I would love that. Yeah. I feel like, like my coffee game, like we buy, you know, it's just like a little sloppy and I'd love a few You pointers. have a, you do have a d- disgustingly <laughs> sloppy coffee game. I always say that about her. Um, yeah. Okay, well, Mosh, do you want to do you want to take a call and see if we can help someone? I'd love to, Beth. Uh, thanks for coming by, and it's been nice talking to you. Good, goodbye. Good night. <laughs> no, Beth, I'm actually sleeping out here on the patio. <laughs> can we can we call someone and ask for some advice? I'd love that. We're gonna ask them for advice. Maybe this would be fun. All right. <laughs> actually, let's see what they have to say. We're gonna call Alana in New York City. She's a Jew. I can tell. I did share the um email. Oh, did you think? And did you. anybody call in? I don't know. Maybe Alana from New York City. Yes, she said they did. Hi. Hi. How are you? Shabbat Shalom. How's it going? <laughs> you know, I, I predicted you'd be Jewish and I was right. Um, do you have any advice for us before we get started? It's Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Beth Stelling. Hi. That's right. A good piece of advice could have been introduce, introduce yourselves and your guests. That would have been good. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Um, no, it's so exciting. I I love you guys so much. And Beth, I'm a huge fan. So oh, this cool. is cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, well, we love you too. And yeah, we're I'm super, happy to have you. We're super excited. Beth was just saying she couldn't wait to get Alana on the line. <laughs> um, so so Alana, what's going on? How how can we help you? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Wait, before you start, uh, Alana, I have another question. I'm so sorry, Natasha. How do you take your coffee in the morning? Oh, uh, I use like oat milk and maple syrup. 
Whoa. Whoa. I do that sometimes. We got a hippie on the line. A yeah, wow. Maple syrup we, idea there. You put a little bit of ayahuasca, which is like an ayahuasca swir- swirling stick. To You guys think that's hippie? That's just like sweet cream. No, yeah. but it's like, it's you know. It's also paleo. She, yeah, it's paleo. She doesn't want that nasty processed sugar, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Alana, what, co- what brand of coffee? Are you making it home or are you walking to get it as a treat for yourself? I, I used to be the person who went out to get my coffee, yeah. but... Um, yeah, now I make it at home since the pandemic. I do like the whole Chemex thing. Oh, I love a Chemex. Oh, well, Such a nice Alana. clean taste. Alana, you should hang out with us. This seems like a real match. Um, oh, to Alana, should I wear my hair in the clip? <laughs> the great question, Beth. <laughs> or take it down. <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, I, I like the clip. Okay, I like okay. it stays. It, then uh, just the last question is yeah, just what's course. the brand of coffee? And are you devoted to it or no? I am, but they've been having a supply chain issue that I hope clears up soon. It's called Wild Wild Crafter Botanicals. Whoa. Um, so you were talking blue. shit about me calling her a hippie, and then all of a sudden we came to Wild, Wild Crafter, Crafter Botanicals. Botanicals. That seems like too many uh, rejoinders. You know, it could be like wild botanicals. They definitely wild sound craft. like they have an Instagram, so let's hit them up. <laughs> yeah, wild crafter. Bota- so listen, if you're in the LA area, hit up uh, Standing Egg Coffee. And if you're in the, I don't know, where is it? Bangladesh. Go to wild crafter botanicals <laughs> and t- try their beans. All right, Alana. Uh, so what's up? How can we help? Oh, thank you. Um, so me and my boyfriend of four years, uh, we just broke up. Sorry. Um, and oh, thank you. Um, I, I did initiate it, but I was, you know, heartbroken. Congrats. to have to I was talking to the guy. I'm always team dude. So yeah, I'm sorry for him, <laughs> wherever he is. Right you now. initiated it, but it was still hard. Yeah, it was really hard. I, I hated it. Um, but the thing is we, we live in New York and we still have three months left on our lease. So, mm. uh, but at least you don't have a three month old. That's true. Okay. So that's one positive. Yeah. You could have a, left. you could have a wild galloping botanical <laughs> <laughs> running around. <laughs> So three months left on the lease. Yeah. And it looks like we're going to be probably spending the next two of them still living together. Yikes. Um, so, yeah. Um, wow. Is that you know, why you're I, talking so quietly? Because he's asleep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. And Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Oh, we can hear you. But it's pretty sexy. It is definitely a sultry, <laughs> sultrier voice than I need right now, honestly. <laughs> why do you think me emotional slides <laughs> across... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you have a boner too? Yeah. <laughs> okay. two, two months is not that long, but I would definitely try to exhaust some options and get creative if possible. But I know that it, sometimes that's hard. Alana, I have some questions. Wait, what is your question? Oh, well, just it's it's just been so much harder than I even thought, I think, for both of us so far. So I was wondering yeah, if you guys have any advice, do you have any tips? What do you do for work? Um, I'm primarily a book editor. So you could work remotely. Mm. Yes. And, oh, and I, you got you got to get out of town. Yeah. Go on some vacation. I mean, it's so obvious. Go to Puerto Rico for a week. <laughs> Can't go you to, find someone? Do you have endless funds? Fuck yeah. Go to Mike. Go to Paris. No, but you don't need. <laughs> 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 you have you been to Milan when the when <laughs> the tulips are blooming? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need endless funds to leave town. You can go camping. You can go. I mean, just get away How long as is as been? much as you can. You got to get. I know it's cold on the East Coast, but you got to get out of there. Go to Miami, catch an STD, fucking some like muscle bound guy. Like you got to get, you got to go. Is that an option? <laughs> or like, could you get like, let's say your rent is 2000, your part. Could you find a friend who he would get along with? who You could give a deal to like for 1200, smart, smart, you can you have like my furnished place. Mm-hmm. And then you can at least take two months of that 2400 and get yourself an Airbnb, maybe like up the Hudson Valley, like that has internet or somewhere like maybe the Catskills. I don't know, like do a little research, get away. But it's like, you knew, you know, you want to break up with this guy. You're just gonna, basically going to be living in torture for two months. It sounds awful to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Two months is going to fly. If I were you, I'd get back together. (laughs) (laughs) Why Why didn't you time it better, Alana? (laughs) This is the same issue you had with Wild Heart Botanicals. You just didn't time it right. Is it a supply chain issue (laughs) with him as well? (laughs) You should have just waited until it was like the lease was up and you're like, well, that's the end of this. Um, And one more little thing. It had to have been really bad if, if, if. You did it before the lease was up. Uh, no shit. Totally. I mean, did you know? you? you well, must- or maybe he has a friend. Maybe you could say like, do you have a friend? He doesn't have a friend. Is right. he? Okay. So here's mm-hmm. a couple things. Like one of, one of my exes, like after I broke up with him, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to get my own Hulu. And he's like, no, don't. 
And I was like, is that because you just want to have like a link to me? And he's like, yeah. And then the minute he suspected that I had moved on, changed the password to the Hulu. Hilarious. <laughs> I mean, what a baby. Would you give your mom the Hulu password? I think so. That's funny. Well, it was your problem. Why were you watching um, Hot Bafo Boys <laughs> all the time on Hulu? That's such a great <laughs> streaming show, by the way. Well, is he? Is are you sensing that he's like trying to maybe make it so you will want to get back together with him? You is know he, is he I mean? drilling a little Porky's or, hole in the wall? So or, he can see you? <laughs> is he like, you know what I mean? Like there's ways to sort of like, Maybe his hopes are high and that's making it even more difficult. Yeah. What is so difficult about it? If you can, you don't yeah. have to betray his trust, but if you can tell us. I mean, I think it was just, it was hard for both of us, even though, you know, it was, I started it. Um, just to be clear, I was out and is, I am, I'm the alpha like, in this situation. I love you. This is like when you're like, cause he's in the other room sleeping. Oh, this he's is definitely so listening. And it's sort of like. <laughs> It's it's like one of the it's like when you write in your diary when you know your mom or somebody's gonna read it you're like today was good and I was also good and I never do anything bad and I love my mom. Okay, so well, yeah, how's it bad? How's it bad? It's just really, I mean, it. it if you um, have to type it into the chat. <laughs> then we'll read it. It's just it's just been been really rough seeing each other every day, and I've been trying to sort of put in some space, like I'll go, you know, work somewhere or something. Um, and it seems to have, you know, offended him that I've been uh, taking space. So then I feel like more guilty. Um, Is yeah. it one bathroom? Yes. Oh my God. Wow. wow. So you're like Are you de- smelling it- the shit of the man you used to love. What a world. Uh, yeah, it doesn't smell good anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you lost that love and feeling when you don't like the way his shit smells. Wait, hold on. Alana, can you leave? Is that unrealistic of us to suggest? You mean like Airbnb or something? Or go go on a trip somewhere? Is that is that? I mean, you work remotely. You could go back you? home, maybe, or st- go with a friend. Does anyone have a guest house? And then just eat the money. You know, like, do you need to be in Manhattan right now? So I can do that in May, but mm. for now, and I think in a week he's going to go home for two weeks, which is oh, good. That's perfect. Um, but but right now, I mean, it it just happened on Friday, so right now it's just like okay. Very, I got wow. it. I got it. I, I here's what you do. What you need to do, Ilana, and because you're Jewish, you'll be good at this, is, uh, am I right about that, that you're Jewish? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, fuck yeah. Yeah, no, you're very religious. You believe in the literal truth of the Bible as given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Um, I love You're going to need to do some, like, and I'm not good at this, Natasha is, like real scheduling. Okay, you have one week until he leaves, and then Mm -hmm. in May you can leave. So what I would do... But he'll be gone. That's what I'm saying. In one week, he's going, so you have a week... Can't you just go stay with a friend uh, for even two days? Even give yourself some... His offense is not your problem. Right now, the, the, you're in the midst of a situation where n- it's a combination of hurt feelings and New York, right? Yeah. And and his hurt feelings are not your problem. Even though you care about him, you're no, not... That's the tough part. Yeah. God, I really take it on. But it's just not. It's not your problem. Everybody's it's hurt annoying. when they get broken up with. And the New York part makes it so that you are like still on top of each other. So go to a hotel one night, a friend's house the next night, uh, go home for one night, then the next night stay at a different friend's house. Before you know it, he's gone back home. Then you can make, then you can start making your real plans to get the fuck out of Dodge to to go on a on a trip. It doesn't have to be an expensive trip. It could be. You could also use this as a as a opportunity to connect with people you might be needing to connect with, mm-hmm. whether it be a family member. Are I you, don't know. Yeah, you could go to visit. Stay strong? Are you needing to stay strong? Like you might go back, or no? <laughs> Oh, there we go. See, he, oh my God, he just came in the other room. He's like, oh, she hesitated. Alana, Alana, are you um, are you what I call like uh, in a relationship paralyzed from the waist down? Or like, what does start- that mean? You keep going back sexually? No, just like meaning like you feel nothing down there, and so you you need to either reawaken it with someone else, or it's just like dead inside. Or are you like, oh no, I actually want to sleep with him one more time? Because like this is why you, you struggle with um, telling people, right? Like I'm gonna break up with them, and you might be done with someone before you're done with their ween. It's true. That's fair. Yeah. And once you, I always used to describe it as once you've slept with a the person, there's a portal between your genitals that never really fully goes away. It can get really small, a very, but it's always kind of there. It's like when you pierce your ears and you don't put an earring in for like 10 years and then you go oh my god it's still pierced like but there's can- like a little bit of smelly liquid <laughs> well, okay, so but. alana what's the case 
Do you, are, are you yeah. still attracted to him at all? I think, you know, this was sort of like um, a little bit of a long time coming for okay. me. So yeah, women like, usually do that. It's kind of brutal. <clears throat> and then when the door's closed, it's really closed. Yeah, it's just sort of like it was impossible until it was inevitable for me. So now I'm kind of just like, mm. I think we just need to. You to really are on. a book editor. Look at these crunchy turns of phrase. I, I love, love it. it. Well, it was impossible until it was inevitable. I know. <laughs> you definitely have to do a little scheduling and soul searching and figure out how you can fill up those like gaps in the schedule, like the four days here, the seven days here. I mean, if you want to make a schedule, let him know when where you're going to be if, if you want, like just to give him a little bit of anticipation and mm -hmm. so he can manage his feelings and be gone if he wants to and know when you're going to be gone. That's a courtesy, right? If I you know that, I if disagree. you know you have the house for three days, what? She should just just like not say anything she's well, not he her, already didn't like that she's not her she's not his girlfriend right she's now that's something i do with you she's now his, is exactly she's now his indentured roommate and <laughs> like it's not your responsibility to it is sad to go through a breakup i'm not saying fuck that guy he's a he's a dick i'm not saying that it's sad but that sadness belongs to him not to you and you're not responsible to mitigate his sadness you're responsible to take care of yourself as long as you broke up broke up with That's integrity savage. it's true if you broke up with him with integrity and you were kind and it sounds like you were because i can just see it in you mm -hmm. then now your job is to take care of yourself right it's not to continue to to manage his feelings until your lease runs out that doesn't make sense it's no like, because it'll end up beginning ugh, i mean i yeah and then I've she does it for really two more nicely, months and then i but I, I'm actually guilty of, um, like, uh, I don't want you, but uh, also I'll be, like, really offended when you do move on. Sure. So, well, like, <laughs> I need, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes That's he's so some of these, Wait, Alana, I, just I think your, your, your audio went out, I think. I think it was him. <laughs> it might have been him. He cut the he cut the cord. Yeah, I just for me, I'm just like, how did some of these men that have told me that they'd love me forever find room in their hearts for their wives? <laughs> <laughs> I always felt the opposite, Beth. When there was somebody that I was crazy about that got married, I always thought, oh, thank God I got out of the way. I was standing between that woman and her and her husband. Like, what was mm -hmm. I thinking? Like, that's uh, maybe that was a trick I played on myself. I'm standing I, between me and my husband. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's real though. You, I don't think that you. You that you need to because here's what's really probably going to happen you're going to try to stay in there and like counsel his grief and take it on and you're going to grow in resentment and by the time you move out you're going to hate him and he's going to hate you because you're going to be so busy trying to like medicate his wound that you're going to resent the fact that you have to do that even though you volunteered for it and then it's going to turn into resentment you're going to start treating him like shit and then by the time this whole thing is, is over you guys are going to be enemies whereas if you start taking space for yourself now put a schedule up you know and say get I gotta, busy get busy as fuck then you can be friends yeah. with this guy if you, you choose to do that. You also need to, I don't know how much social media is a part of your life, but oh yeah, that's un, a tough one. You can't unfollow while you're on the lease, though. That's a fight. Are you feeling like, do you need support from your family? Like, or do they live close? Because you go home too. Yeah, no, they, they yeah, my, my family is close. I mean, we're, we're not close, but, but they are like. Distance local. close, but you're not family. You're not like lovingly close. She hates their religious connection. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like you want to go home and visit your family. For a week um, no i don't think so yeah. but I mean, I, I, anyway, i'm gonna go to i'm gonna visit some friends i think so. honestly i think it's such a great opportunity to practice just this new thing like mm -hmm. what moshe's saying like just yeah. being strong and not feeling like you've got to have this like overactive management of his feelings and just keep catching yourself doing it and use it as an opportunity to grow and yeah. it'll be over soon. Yeah, it will be over soon. It's temporary. Stay strong. I mean, you're right. The first decision is the best decision. But... This too shall pass. But other, I, I, other I wish I could have done that in a relationship. What's that? Been, may, oh, maybe I can do it in a month. I mean, I feel what do you like... mean? We're, in a, we're, no. not, we're not breaking up with me, are you? No, no, but Wait, I feel Alana, like Wait, Alana, what are you doing in a month? Oh. <laughs> I'm always managing everyone. I feel like I'm... I think maybe women take that on a lot. I oh think my that's God, very I do fair. it even if I don't want to. It's so irritating. Yeah. I think that's very It's just fair. instinctive, you know? It's and it's just exhausting. Takes, I feel like my brain is broken sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm just, like, why are you... He's not thinking about this or you for a second longer. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll catch myself sit, sit, sitting there like giving myself wrinkles and stuff. <laughs> I think that there is truth to what you're saying. Just even as a man observing it, it seems like the dynamic is that the man is like, you know, 
care for me. I, I don't know. It, it can work the other way too. But ge- but in general, yeah, I think that's that's fair. And so like, there's probably some of that too. It's like you're going like, oh, I'm supposed to be taking care of this guy, but it's like, especially because you yeah. initiated the breakup, so you're feeling guilt that you did that. Are you but- journaling? <laughs> I'm not a good journaler. Well, you should not. be. You should be <laughs> writing all the reasons you broke up with him, and then oh, also write. That. Yeah, write. <laughs> then you write the things that you'll take away and learned. And then you'll keep writing day by day because because you, you, my brain starts to play, play tricks on me and stuff. And I got to remember all the bad stuff. But what, trust me, I got it all logged and it still means nothing. Where, where <laughs> does, um, it still means nothing. Where does wild botanical um, bean come from? But where are they stuck? Wild craft or botanicals. Where, do they, where are they stuck on the, in the supply chain? In, um, in New Mexico. I have a great suggestion. Make a, make a fucking pil- pilgrimage. Oh. Yeah. To, to the wild crafting bean whatever go botanical. stay at, at, in Albuquerque there's that really oh, pretty good, lavender farm that you can stay on it's really not good, that expensive called Los, it's called Los Poblanos is the name of we're plugging a lot of companies I tonight those were a pepper but they are it's a it's a it, they're I they like you can their even peppers like camp on there maybe where in New Mexico land? is it Alana not sure <laughs> let's look it up L- Laura can you look it up for us here's what we're doing we're about to make your eat pray love um uh, moment here, you know. It, put are on we your funding calendar. this, Moshe? No, we're not paying for it. What are you crazy? <laughs> she's a book editor. She's fabulously wealthy. She's a junior book editor. She's got nothing but money. Look nothing at her but chair. It's yeah, white. That's a crazy. <laughs> Look at that bookshelf. It's got all those books on it. I mean, her hair's clean. Nice she's got a clean part. Oh my god. So here's what we recommend here in the. It looks in, more professional than any of my agents or managers' backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here on the Endless Honeymoon podcast, we would like to recommend that you take a uh, pilgrimage. To northern New Mexico. Mexico. We don't know where, but you're going to find out where to go. New Mexico is one of the most beautiful states in the union. I do love it. You're going to buy as you're going to buy a year's worth of beans, and while you're there, you're going to run into a rusty, rumbly cowboy <laughs> that makes you feel like a woman again for the very first time. And you're going to be the oil that makes them less creaky. That's right, and and she's going to say, "I was a big city girl." I was a I was a Jew from the big city, and he was a he was a, a and he's ha- like, hey, <laughs> he's a, a Jew in Albuquerque. Get a rope. <laughs> <laughs> he was a half Navajo uh, man and uh, who loved to roast beans, and he took me to the white sand desert, and that's where I found who I really was. That's what that, that's what I recommend. G- yeah, get sounds going. like you're going to be writing a book instead of editing it. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck, honey. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Yeah. Be strong. Try this new personality out. I think yeah. it'll be good. It's good yeah. for you. It's good for you to and do it for me. Don't yeah. cater to his feelings or worry about him. He'll be freaking fine. Right. One more thing I'll say before we let you go. There is a difference. And I think maybe this is gendered. There is a difference between taking care of yourself and being an asshole. And people that want to take care of people think that taking care of themselves is being an asshole, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's, you can be I compassionate know. and kind and caring and also... So you're just compassionate in your head? No, you're so, like, sometimes you're the butthole if you, you if you are taking care of them too much because I t- won't let go of somebody totally. I don't even want to be with. No, you be, exactly. You can you can mm-hmm. see, you don't have to be a jerk about it. You can say, oh, th- I'm just doing this for me. It has nothing to do with you, but I'm taking off. Goodbye. I think it'd be better for both of us. It doesn't. Yeah, they any- don't. They definitely won't believe you. But, oh, that's yeah. a, that's not your problem. I think yeah. uh, one of my classic lines, which honestly I only used once, but when I was trying to do this in a in a humane way, I just said, "Let's leave it at love. If we are Ooh. loving towards each other, let's leave it at that." I like that. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucked him the everything. next day. <laughs> uh, all right. Good luck to you. Okay. Thanks so much. Hey, Bye. stay in touch. Tell us what happens. Tell us how it works. We'd yeah. love to know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks all right. So cool. Much. Thanks. Bye. Uh, that would make my skin crawl. Oh, Having I mean, my I ex in the same oh my god, in I the would bathroom. fucking go crazy. If you're done with somebody, like we we, she he was listening obviously the whole time, and so she was being like really quiet and stuff, and looking through the little yeah, peeps, yeah. people that he so, drilled like, in her wall. And, and it's not like I want her to drag him just because it doesn't work. Does, does obviously like we said doesn't mean he's a bad person, but I feel like if she were being a little more candid. It's possible she would say, "I am grossed out by him." You know, like like every little thing he does bothers me. Yeah, but then yeah. they also have she has no private space, like not yeah, even she a caught, bathroom. Usually, you catch the ick, and then everything right. they do, it's like I don't even like the way they chew. Yeah, and totally. it's not even that. It doesn't have to be angry. It's just like. Ugh. And by the way, it, it's, it's the ick. we should mention that it's exactly too much time to deal with the ick. Yeah. If it was two weeks, you'd be like, you know what, yeah. suck it up and fucking deal with it. Two months is exactly like. A breaking point for a human psyche to have to sit next to someone that, that all they want to do is get freedom from. I mean, I would stay yeah. with a friend probably. Hundred yeah. percent, I would too. I just would make I would make it a priority to get out of there. 
Yeah. You, you know, you get stuck in your ways and you think, oh, I can't leave. We didn't ask how old she was. Sometimes people act bad too, act mm-hmm. badly. Like, because they're sh- you, young. Like she comes back and he's destroyed the apartment because oh, her name's on the lease. That is true. And we That's don't know funny. anything about him. No, we go like, how old are you? She's like, well, I'm 22. You're like, you know what? Stay in the apartment. <laughs> protect your stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, New York's got to be littered with people like that. Because Absolutely. like the only way to get a real discount is to shack up. Because mm-hmm. you could get a one bedroom, mm-hmm. but then you both split it. So you could maybe get something nice that's pretty small. Yeah. So yeah, it's hard to stay together. You just, she just got to find a way. Get to New Mexico. It's so much cheaper there. I'm telling, I, it would be so cool if she took that advice and just literally did it. I mean, what a life changing experience is, that would be. the problem is every time you leave your house in New York, you're like surrounded by street life. Imagine living in Albuquerque. I know it would be a good change of pace. Yeah. I want some of those botanical it is so pretty. beans. It's the most beautiful. It is nice to be in nature. I hear you guys. Yeah. And it's like a nice dry heat. It's a dry heat. This really is coffee talk. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> can we, can we, Take yeah. another call? Let's do, do can it. you do one more with us? I'll do seven more. Wow. Beth, is there anything you want to talk about? I like your chill vibe. You do have a chill vibe tonight. Really? Yeah. You know what? Sometimes I find that about like any time, right? Uh, Show wise. There's so many variables in stand up comedy that we don't really talk about that often because it's just like, oh, it's an audience and you. And it's like, no, there's so many variables the time, the light, the location, the totally. type of people, and you. Neil Brennan. You. Neil Brennan always used to say, "Stand up's like the only job where you have absolutely no idea how you'll do until the moment your job begins." Yeah, like you, you just don't know. You're like, "I think I'm gonna kill," and then you get on like, "Oh no, I didn't have it tonight." Like, yeah, I just wasn't there, or "Oh wow, I was better, way better than I thought yes. I was gonna be." Yeah, you're not fully in control of that. Yeah, no, well, I mean, def- I'm definitely chill. So you're like- bombing right now, just so you know. <laughs> I'd believe if I weren't crushing so hard with Laura. <laughs> <laughs> our producer laura is literally f- in a fetal position <laughs> crying right now she's wearing her i love best shirt <laughs> that's why i feel so good about myself no but you're right i am chill it is it is night and we don't need to talk about it but i'm chill for a reason i was like upset but i'm fine Whoa. i'm here to have fun and let uh, go let's well, pry <laughs> wait a minute don't go to the call let's pry no that's what show business is all about honey make it uh, you get news go that you're uh, mom and pa have parted. You're broken hearted, but you go on. Or your you favorite, gotta do at midnight. Your favorite <laughs> uncle died at dawn. What is this? <laughs> there's no business like show business. Oh, that's literally, there's no business there's like show. There's no business <laughs> like show. But you know, you, you gotta sparkle no matter what. That's true. And that's, that's best. Sometimes you can't bring it. Like I know, that's for a bad 45 too. minutes. Oh my goodness. I, sometimes you can choose not to, but obviously if you're on the road, you're on the road and you, you're definitely going up. You know one of the good feelings in comedy though is when you've, you know that you've written enough material that if you keep talking, no matter what happens, you'll get to 45, 45 minutes will pass. <laughs> and you're just like, I know that that amount of time will pass. So no matter what, a light will come on yep. and I will say good night and yep. the show will have happened. And that's mm-hmm. that. Yep. I mean, I, it's, I, there have been times Early, I remember I just had a bad trip visiting my dad when I was, who knows at the time, I must have been 23 or something. And I remember s- telling the booker, like, you know, I'm just really sad after the trip. I'm not really in a great place and I, I don't think I can come tonight. And he was like, no, that's why you come. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got to show up and put it on the stage. I was like, no, I'm going to stay home. And he's <laughs> like, damn, that I have $700 sunk into this promotion <laughs> Wait, line. so you canceled the show? I did, but that was just like a... Yeah. Probably, I don't even know, like a Thursday at eight in Chicago. At the right. Osha Comedy hates Club. canceling shows. I don't. Look, I'm I, don't. Tell, I bet. I bet. I'm. If we if we were doing stats, I bet I would be near the top of cancelers. Of no cancel. Of no cancels. You're probably at the top of cancel. Like if we're talking about attendance wise, I'm not perfect attendance, but I'm pretty close. What do you think? I cancel a lot. Yeah, Natasha's like, I'm not feeling it. I feel just like no, but I cancel in advance. No, you do. You do. That's true. All right, wait. Let's do another call. We're going to call Danielle right here in Los Angeles. Hey, Danielle, it's Natasha Legero, Moshe Kasher, and our dear friend Beth Stelling. Hi. I mean, I love you guys too, but I saw Beth live and Beth is everything and more. Okay. Oh, Where'd you see her live? I, I went to, um, it was like two years ago, uh, so pre-COVID, but like it was at um, at Kate Berlant's Communicate at UCB. Oh, yeah. And that you remembered Beth and... 
Well, no, I just mean yeah, like. I guess we're wondering if you've ever seen us live. Because <laughs> we're kind of electric as well. I listen to your podcast every week. Okay. I, you guys are on as well okay great thank uh, you daniel uh, before we move on me. from your sycophantic uh hero worship of beth stelling wh- how do you take your coffee in the morning yeah. uh with uh some oat milk and a little bit of sugar sugar wow oat milk is thriving these days have oat you ever thought of it. doing oat milk and maple syrup yeah that's it's a little what, healthier that's the new theme of our podcast and by the way we're you you know you can keep doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> Wait a bet. Just because she's your biggest fan and doesn't like our comedy at all. <laughs> don't just butter up to her. All right. What's up, Danielle? Um, I, I have a, 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 it's a very like multi-layered question, mm-hmm. but it's very succinct. I'm having a lot of insecurities around um, my best friend who has um, a lot of money. We used to not live near each other. Now we do. I recently found out how much money she makes and it um, was shocking to say the least. I think it's a combination of the money, the privilege. Um, she's also white. She's also thin. I'm not thin. Um, and she, uh, she, she's related to a very, very wealthy public figure. Diplo. Oh, Diplo's daughter. Oh, my God. Unreal. I knew. James, fin- James Vanderbeek. <laughs> okay. So what? Okay. And so what, what are you wondering about? So I guess I'm just, um, I, we kind of like, we're taking a little bit of space right now, just Uh kind of trying to figure out like, you know, she's my best friend of like a million, she's like my sister. So this is like complicated and hard. Yeah. Um, but I guess I've been, I know the problem is me. Like I know. No, it's not just (laughs) you. (laughs) No, I like that. Listen, let me just tell you, I applaud the courage to have a friend who's privileged and white and to call a podcast with two white hosts and a white guest to find out what to do. Now that to me, that's the cutting edge. Well, I'm <clears throat> first of all, let me say, I hear you. And even, you know, can relate to this feeling on one level, which would be like, she's thin. Cause uh, yeah. I definitely have been my weight. Well, I got an old joke that I'd like to tell right now. Yeah. Do camera. some material, Beth. Yeah. She loves your material. <laughs> Ready? Danielle, this one's for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage right now. She didn't want to come tonight because she had a hard visit with her dad, but come, she made it anyway because the show must go on. The one and only Beth Stelling, ladies and gentlemen. So I've gained and lo- oh, so I've gained and lost weight. So many. Uh, let me. Start. Can you read? I'm just kidding. You know, this is when we <laughs> just double down on the this joke and we do okay. it anyway. Okay. The joke is I've gained and lost weight so many times over the years. My boobs are like an atheist dad at Catholic mass who's just like. <laughs> I'm not going to get up again. This is insane. Okay, so that's the it's joke a good bit. for you. It's a great bit. All I'm saying is I can, that on at least one level of the three, I can relate to because I just know the feeling. So yeah. it's hard to explain. It's unfortunate because what I say about myself and all my friends, I wish that I could see myself how they see me because yeah. how everybody else sees you and probably her is like, you got a beautiful curvy body. Your skin makes you always look good because you have that d- beautiful melanin, you know. Say it, you go ahead. Melanin. Yeah. <laughs> um, I bet your boobs are real. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say real soft, but uh, I didn't mean. I, I, I think you have beautiful melanin, too. I was going to say that. <laughs> Wait, well, I just mean like those insecurities are very real. And of course, growing up in a freaking, you know white supremacist society is going to whether you believe it or not there's messaging that exists and you were yeah. just steeped in it so and th- it sucks did you i'm oh, sorry so sorry it sucks like you're saying it's my problem it's like well i guess you're right unfortunately it feels like your problem is not your problem well yeah. i would i would okay now here let now cis white straight man gonna talk so let's all listen up most your mic is on yeah uh, yeah uh, it's time for me to weigh in <laughs> i would say my instinct always when I'm in situations, even in the realm of what you're talking about, is that the only thing I have power over is the part of it that is me, right? So what Beth is saying is totally legitimate and uh, that, that there are, are there are societal and probably specific things that this person is doing that are on them. But the only thing I can ever do with situations like this is like get to the bottom of like, what's up with me? Mm-hmm. That's the only thing you can deal with. It sounds like you have a resentment right and i can understand the resentment and so then you just have to say do i is this relationship do i value it enough to save it despite the fact that there are things about this person that are driving me crazy and if the answer is yes then you deal or not you i would deal with the parts of me 
that are my my problem, my jealousy, my uh, blowing things, th- taking things personally that aren't personal, uh, my judging people th- for things that they don't have control over, and then the rest of it. Well, then that's her problem, right? If she's privileged and it and it and it expresses itself in rudeness, then well, that's her problem. If she's privileged with her money and doesn't understand she's being insensitive with her money around you, then that's her problem. But you can only work on yourself, like you can't work on another person. And then once you work on yourself, then you can go, okay, I'm free now of this resentment. And then I can see if this relationship still has value and I want it in my life. That's my feeling. And also you have to take each of those instances and really think about her. Like, are you mad at her about things she can't control or are you mad at at her about things that she can control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's something to think about. You know, she she can't really control who she's related to, I guess. No, right? definitely not. And I think that's like, yeah. But that's she can control like- how she acts about it. And she could if gain she weight if it. she was cool. Mm. <laughs> no. Let's some of those bars that they gave Regina. In you know, or if she's mean, insensitive girls. to you about like, you know, is she inviting you to like a really expensive restaurant and expecting you to pay for your half? No. No, she's like super kind. She's like very like, you know, anti-capitalist, like queer, lovely. It's I I I know that it's like a me thing. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. like how to separate like my friend from like mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm like feeling like I want to cry, but like no, it's a safe space. Like, I hear the, you. The Yeah, it's okay. Society stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's all it's, it's all hard. mixed it's all mixed up. How could it not be? How well, could it not be? A couple be mixed things up? we've said is like, oh, it's not in her control, right? That she's rich or all in related to these people. It's like, but it's still unfair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a leg up. It's it sure. has been for centuries. So it's like it's still yeah. it sucks, you know? And so I say, you know, definitely feel those feelings. I'm sure there's been instances like I Again, t- I remember, you know, being a nanny out here, uh, one of my earliest jobs with the coffee and I was running errands. And, you know, one time I remember my boss saying like, hey, can you pick up these things from the grocery? I, I think she said Gelson's. And in my head, I'm going, no, unless you're going to pay me immediately. I don't yeah. know. You don't understand that. I don't have that in my checking account uh-huh. right now. You know, yeah, so yeah. so that can be frustrating. Or I remember going to before I ever got a writing job um, and had anything steady. I was going out to eat with another per, who was a peer, similar maybe in your situation, who was also like a little more financially privileged than me, and in in the first place, and had connections as well. And yeah. they have made me feel bad. So that's yeah. a different story for you. But they are they do hold things over my head. They are rude. And I would say there are a looks things the opposite way. Like maybe she feels like I'm prettier or something. I have no clue. I would um, guess she, she probably does. Yeah. No, I'm just right. kidding. I'm I'm kidding about that. But like <laughs> there is an imbalance in that way. And I remember the check coming and I I was careful about what I ordered because I didn't have the money. And she was like, Let's just split it. And I'm like, oh, how my nightmare. do you not understand <laughs> that? And it got really upset. And she made me feel like really bad like what's the big deal like Mm -hmm. raise her voice at me and i mean we're not i haven't seen her since but that you're in a different situation but i'm just saying micro level i'm trying to relate to you because yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and i also feel like you know going on instagram sometimes too it's like every time you go you know you you just it's so easy to to be jealous and envious of like so many things and it's almost like it's it's very hard to go through the day without being envious of things around you because there's so many images coming up in front of us. And I don't know, I just had this thought the other day, like just be prepared to envy. You know, yeah. in general, I think you have to really just get into that and know that's going to happen. And yeah. just maybe... And how are you supposed to stay off your phone? It's like, it's we're kind of in a hell trap nightmare. But I yeah. just want to say too, like I guarantee there's someone at work or your neighbor or someone who sees you at Trader Joe's who is like, that girl's so pretty. I, Mama Mia. I, I don't know if I have the, you know, somebody who's just like not telling you these things. But like here's I on what you're saying, Beth, I, everything you're saying is legit. My thing is always Beth and that's yeah. what I learned in improv school. <laughs> Beth and, but UCB class, Beth a, everything what Beth said is true. But then my, my thought was like, Society is unfair. Yeah. The, the, the system is set up in a way that's unfair. You know, people have privilege. They have financial privilege. They have racial privilege. They have all these set systems of privilege and unfairness. And and it's it's a it's a byproduct of that unfairness that it's gonna that it would rob you of a deep and 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 lasting friendship. Like also, 
you I don't think that unless this person is insensitive that you should allow the unfairness yeah. of society to also rob you of your friend despite the fact that she represents you. all of these things like she sounds like, kind of cool right yeah, like maybe yeah. it's cool she, you get to be that, around her you've made that clear I agree with you it's like I'm saying get angry have those yep, moments I agree with that totally r- vent with a friend who feels the same mm-hmm. but I also uh, Moshe and Natasha are saying really important things which is true like I would have never tried um artichoke if i didn't have that rich friend <laughs> so it's like you're gonna experience some stuff that you wouldn't get to because of that and you know that and that's have you that's ever a benefit by the way have you ever talked to your friend directly <laughs> about the way that you're feeling so we had a talk so this whole thing came up because of the new job that she took on um like recently and um like so it's basically like me and my other best friend and both of them make like good money and it's like me um not but whatever so the one girl was like the other friend was like oh like you know what's her face got a raise and i was like oh crazy and then you know they were like oh yeah it's like it's like wild and i was like oh wow and then the one friend was like oh do you want to know and i like initially said like yeah. i like thought about it and i was like yeah sure and so like that's kind of what like mm-hmm. spiraled the whole thing was yeah. like she was kind of feeling like i I think the realization, which is like even more frustrating and a whole nother layer is like, I didn't really realize I was having these feelings towards her of like frustration and like, you know, um, competitiveness too. Right. In terms of like making money. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm like at a place right now in my life where I'm just trying to like figure a lot of things out. Um, yeah. And so, but so she, so whatever. So we have this conversation around the money thing because it kind of came up with this whole salary change. And she was like, um, she just said like, you know, I feel like you've been acting a certain way towards me. And it was like an hour long walk Mm. that we went on around her neighborhood. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like know what the thing that you're saying is. And she's like, I just feel like sometimes you make these like comments every once in a while. Like I called her bougie one time and she was like, and I guess like, I think like things like that, like I'm not like, you know, being horrible towards her, but there's these little, you're you're having little bubbles of of mm -hmm. anger. For a woke, queer, friendly white person with a lot of money, their, their friend of color calling them bougie is like a real existential panic. That's for sure. They're like, no. (laughs) Yeah. uh, She's very lucky to have you. But white fragility is really, yeah. Yeah, But it's real. It's like the, 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 the unfairnesses of the system are affecting everybody, including the privileged people. People, you know, right. like everybody's going through their process and Danielle dealing with their thing. Called me bougie. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't no. want any of the caviar. No, it was no, weird. No. Be- Beth is like this. She's like, Danielle called me bougie. Mm, artichoke. <laughs> the only thing that makes me feel better. <laughs> <I'm-> <laughs> but you know that it- Beth is right too. Like sometimes the only way to do some things, like when I was younger, I remember like trying to piggyback on another rich person's, like our rich person's experience. Yeah. You can kind of go to some cool places yeah. use them yeah. for that a little bit <laughs> <laughs> what no that's no, funny I'm, I'm have you thought about that about really riding on that financial <laughs> privilege and just getting just stop calling her bougie and just get her to buy you shit yeah i think it's just sort of like yeah but i think you know taking all of this that we've talked about i think you kind of have like a a nice i'm glad you vented to us because you need to you need to find other friends that you can relate and not talk shit or something but like vent i'm frustrated because i want these things but it's freaking tough and it's not accessible to me and then that will hopefully cut out some of these little uh, you know passive aggressive things you're saying to her even though it's not you did you did nothing wrong i'm just saying like that way you're not at her needling her and and i liked what moshe said too now that you're processing, I think you should, since she's like a sister, be able to share some of it. And yeah. and it's not your job to educate her on what it feels like to, you know, go yeah. through the experiences you're feeling. Right. So I'm not saying explain it to her, but I think maybe, and it will be up to you, it might yeah. be a little bit of a relief to share like, look, this is where it's coming from. I hope yeah. you can understand. Yeah. Have you done? Yeah, you haven't done that. I would. That's so hard to do. It's hard. Oh yeah, that's, that's why I'm saying hard. you're gonna have to. But don't you think if she, you, you love her and she loves you, don't you think she would want to know the whole you, even the part of you that you're like not necessarily proud of, and that is gonna maybe even make her feel uncomfortable? You know? Yeah, I mean, we had a talk. Um, we had a talk kind of about like a little bit of this and like scratch the surface. I think I've just been processing since and like. Okay. Um, but we're kind of like taking, it feels like we're having in a breakup right now, but we're like taking space. Like she's going on a trip to visit the, um, 
relative public figure relatives and then like, Diplo, Perry. She, she, yeah no she's going to the ultra world festival in miami <laughs> to go hear uncle diplo perform <laughs> okay, i kind of want to tell you guys who it is but your producer said that she would bleep it but i think you guys will think it's funny oh okay we'll know. bleep oh, yeah. it you, so we have our we word promise to bleep but we'll, it. we'll riff on it and it'll be okay, okay. she's related to Oh my oh God! My well, God. you now should we have said that in the going. beginning. I mean, no, you got to get this so person out of your life. Oh my get God! Her out of your I life. cannot deal. She can't oh, be your friend Jesus. anymore. Does she have a hairless cat? It's a relative through marriage. That yeah. is so, so that is funny. Out. So she has an island. To oh go wait, to. okay. I have a question then, because I'm like fascinated by how rich people live. Because I grew up, oh, huh. you know. Okay, yeah. so like, what is like? Can you tell us the craziest thing that she's been a she's had to go do? Yeah, good question. Yeah, again, this is part of maybe a couple things could be bleeped because I don't want to give away too much. Yeah, again, it's well, like, maybe the next thing you're sharing, we'll, we could take out. Yeah, but uh, she had to like go to his house and like with the, another person, like the, another relative or whatever, because he was getting like paintings delivered. <laughs> but wait, why is that fun to just be? She gets to be the person to like open the door for a. Well, not fun, but I don't know, like the craziest. I was trying to think of the craziest thing. She doesn't, he it reintroduces himself to her every time. Of course he does. He, yeah. So he he not, barely you know. knows her. No, yeah. but I get it. I get what you're saying. It's like it's adding insult to injury. Like the the, the is she like the, an assistant to this person? No, she's related to him. I know, but like, why is she going to like help him with wouldn't, his like wouldn't tasks? Wouldn't you? I'd go. I, yeah. I, I'd go check it no, out. No, I'm not I'm just, trying to be part of an entourage. No, I'm just saying like Me neither. I'm saying like but. there's already the unfairness of the system, and then she's literally related to like the emblematic like center of the diagram of, <laughs> of mm-hmm. what's wrong with society. Oh, listener, yeah. don't you wish you knew who we were talking about? And not to mention like some of the issues that like Natasha brought up and, and I agree with. That's like what we're looking at all the time. It's like not helping. I mean, this yeah. is maybe a little cheesy, but if there are some people that you I, we didn't even mention it, we kind of put that on you. Do you feel like I don't know? Just things that will help you reinvest in you and see your own beauty, like even what you're following online and stuff. Maybe some mm-hmm. other yeah. things that mm-hmm. can support or how taking you're a fast from, yeah, you know, well, but from, from accounts- looking at her, looking at her uh, vacation right. photos. Right. But there's some yeah. accounts that like encourage you to like uh, and remind you constantly that it's all fake, and right. it'll show oh, their that's themselves. Cool. I like do um I do content creation, so I like have to kind of when Natasha was saying take a break, like I kind of have to do it. Right. Okay. Um. So here is um we're gonna uh my thought now that I've been I've been processing this for a while. Like yeah. I used to have this AA sponsor, and and when I would have a resentment or I would be upset with the girl I was dating or I would have like a, an anger thing, and I would call him and go like I want to like vent. He would always say, Why do you want to? Why do? What do you want? Do you want to tell that person off or do you want to salvage the relationship? Is the relationship so important to you that you want to make sure you can excise this kind of anger so that you can get back to this like thing that's important to you? And that's a question that like only you can answer. Although I suspect I already know the answer. It seems like you care about this person and want to salvage the relationship. So that's why I was saying in the beginning, the only work you can do is on you. You can't solve systemic racism or in a financial inequality. That's not something that you can do. You can work on the stuff inside of you and then see if you can solve, if you're capable of salvaging the relationship. I mean, people grow apart. That happens too. But I mm-hmm. think, okay, you ready for um, cliches from cliches that I've collected? Because three of them I thought of. Are you ready, ready for three cliches? Oh, you have three bits of advice? Three cliches. Okay. One is... Um, Something that Sue Murphy once told me about comedy, but I think it applies to you. Uh, she said, you're only, she told, didn't tell me, she told Jacob Serov, you're only in competition with yourself. And I, I remembered that from the very beginnings of my comedy career, which is like other people's success has no bearing on me. It has bearing on my self-esteem, but that's, a, that's an like illusion. It's like a dream. Yeah. There's always a million people who are like way more successful, who mm-hmm. have exactly what you want who you're mad at. Like there's just, it's always, and then there's always people like underneath you or who you think are it underneath does, you. It does, it never ends. And then there's also people who like, you used to like, you used to be above and now they've surpassed you. Sure. It's like, there's just so many elements of that all the time. And that relates to my So it's almost like a cliches. dream. It's like, it, it's not even real. It is, it's a total illusion. All Like, even though it's based on reality, it's still an illusion because it's, a, you take the reality and then you concoct meaning out of it, right? Yeah, and I tell my, I can tell myself all kinds of stories. Totally. But again, I I've said this to you three times, but it's like there's somebody that's looking at you and is like, I want what you have. Totally, totally true. And I wish I had her 
I love your teeth. And that person <laughs> and that person should listen to these next two cliches. I'm ready. Are, okay, Moshe wants to finish his thoughts, you cliche, guys. Cliche two, don't compare your insides to other people's outsides. Mm. Right? That was, that was a, that's going to go in a mug that I drink black coffee out of. <laughs> With a little oat milk. But that's, <laughs> no really, oat milk for that's me. very dangerous to like go, I feel this way. I look at them and I, I assume that this, this, and this means they're feeling this thing. You don't, we don't know, right? We don't know what other people are dealing with. And that brings me to my final cliche, compare and despair, which uh, I think is, yeah. I try to focus on that all the time. Anytime I'm comparing myself to someone else, I'm living in Natasha's dream and I'm just creating, uh, I'm just adding fuel to the fire of this like anger that isn't even based on reality. Not to say that the systemic things you're talking oh, about yeah, aren't real. Yeah. They're real, but they're just, your reaction to them can then get bigger and bigger based on where you're coming from that's my final yeah jerry's final thought jerry's final thought i would love to get to a place where i'm not jealous or envious same here i can't hey, yeah. dog i know same. Which, what'd you say danielle i said same dog yeah <laughs> totally yeah. me too I, it's tough I, maybe it takes practice it i think does. it takes practice I, I know that social media and stuff's definitely not healthy for us but yeah yeah i think basically for you it sounds like eventually soon here you'll be ready to have a and, and say to this person, you know, I'm hoping we can have a follow up conversation. I've had some time to think more. And whenever you're ready, I'd love to basically yeah. talk. And, and, and I really like your honesty and openness and even calling and knowing like a lot of people would just be like depressed or mad or, you know, it's like you're you're really open to growing and, you know, to these feelings that are like happening and you're being very honest about them. And I think that's a great first step in overcoming yeah, especially yeah. if like an opportunity comes up with this person, you'll be ready now that you've talked about it with them and really figured it out yourself to say like, you know what, I I see that you're going to Hawaii and I'd love to come. If you can buy the ticket, I will provide the fun. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Is it private planes? <laughs> oh, yes. And oh, that's, boy. The, that's like the ongoing joke is I'm like, Hawaii, there's a house there. It's sitting there. It's empty. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> like, this is, this, by the way. Yeah. And wait, what, what did she say? Oh, well, like she doesn't have access to it. That's the gag of like all rich people is like nobody shares the wealth. So right. like yeah. nobody needs to go to these vacation homes the, that are just like sitting all over the everywhere. Let me so say, she doesn't get to go there out. either. Well, let me just say this. No. This whole call has had White Lotus vibes the entire time. <laughs> I mean, I've been thinking that for the whole time. This is strong White Lotus energy. I'm never going to instruct you to steal a necklace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't maybe Spoiler don't alert. maybe don't go to Hawaii because yeah, she, yeah, she created true. more chaos than she it's solved. True. But it's like nobody. I've 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 hung out at these houses with billionaires, and it's like what? they're all lonely too. Well, it's just like then you got to like talk to some loser and <laughs> be treated li like shit by some mom. And then it, I don't know. It's like, why? And then like you're always doing what they want to do. It's better to like focus on yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. and then like going. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe in some world where you and your friend go to this Hawaii place, it would be amazing. But it's like. It'd be more fun to like say like, hey, I'd love to go on a trip. Like maybe you guys can plan a trip that you could both afford or something. I like that idea. What if you plan a little like camping trip with this person and you guys just go take mushrooms in the desert and just bond? Say we go get some mushrooms. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Because yeah, it's so it's like you guys can like c connect on a on a level that, you know, is probably something she longs for too. And it's not like she's really living it up. She kind of seems like she's in this limbo zone of like, she gets, but here's what happens. You shouldn't be that envious of it because she's going to like be waiting around, waiting for the call, helping with this house. Okay. Then she gets to fly here. Next thing you know, five years have passed and she's just kind of like, <laughs> like just like following around some rich person. It's like, that's no life. No, listen, yeah. there's one more cliche that comes to mind. Here it is. It's uh, we're all equals financially and otherwise in the mushroom dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Well, good luck, honey. Good luck, Danielle. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I love all of you guys. And they thank you, you for back. getting so real with us. For real. It was honestly, we're, I'm very touched that you were able to get so honest and stuff. It really is meaningful. And so thank you. Thank you so much. Seriously. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Bye. I do feel like I'm getting less jealous. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I think t I just also, yeah, it's, it's definitely exhausting. accepting of myself. You know, well, like, yeah. like this is the first time I will say, like, uh, I love how my friend Tiffany put it. I've been growing my butt out and it's like, <laughs> you know, I've got to buy extra large underwear now. 
but I really do like my butt. <laughs> and I'm like, fine. You've been growing your butt. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany Porterball said that. But it's like, <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I know that sounds like, but that's why I can relate to her. It's like, there's just so, whether I felt it or not, everything I was steeped in, all the little messages I've absorbed, there's, even if I stepped on the scale and it said a number, I might initially go, <gasps> and then go, you don't give a shit. Like, are you happy and fine? It's just, we've really received so much messaging. So you're saying when you go on Instagram, it makes you have body issues? Um, No. I'm saying I'm just like relating to you and what you said, which is I'm more accepting of myself now right. than oh, I ever okay. have been. I think the part of that is age too. I think yeah. it's like, to me, while I was listening to her and I was like, part of it was like you were saying it's societal and it's like trauma yeah but part of it is also like your raise is coming it's just you haven't gotten it yet like as sometimes as you start to get but older not everyone's comes no yeah. i know but obviously that person is dynamic and is cool and is creative and it, this, this is not the end of her career it's just that sometimes when someone gets something yeah. before you i, I, I guess what i'm saying not everything's fair that's true too. You know, but sometimes you, you come, like working or you're no, working but, way more than someone but else. You come to accept that too, in a way, I think with age, you come to accept like, okay, I'm going to find a way to be happy despite the fact that the world's ugly, I think. Or some people get stuck in depression, yeah. end up killing themselves at a very young age or getting strung out on drugs or passing that trauma on to other people. So that's always an option as well. Yeah, drugs are an option. Um, well, I feel like we really helped those two people. That was I a sweet, so. that was two good, meaty, real calls. I was happy to have and you Beth here for that. And Beth had great Beth. advice. Yeah. I loved being here. We loved having you. And can you tell us where your shows are? I'm in Austin this weekend at the Creek in the Cave, but whether that comes out in time, it's April 8th and 9th, my birthday. And what else you got <gasps> coming up? That's so cute performing on your birthday. I know. Yeah, read out just in case this doesn't get released until afterwards. Yeah, let's see. I just got to go here real quick. I've got Seattle April 22nd at the Crocodile, which is a Friday. That's what's up. I'll be at Largo again on April 28th in Los Angeles. That's also what's up. May 3rd. Okay. And you are following me. I'm at the Masonic Lodge at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Mm, We're Mama following mia. you that day? Yeah. You're the show after me. Oh, no shit. Oh, mm -hmm. that's fun. Yeah, I think I'm at seven. And you guys are at nine or something. Amazing. I can't wait for that And if that you're show. in Dublin somehow, please come to the Sugar Club on Friday, May 20th. <laughs> oh, there you go. All our <laughs> Irish. Ireland. Your life sounds so fun. <laughs> She's touring. That's what that is. <laughs> I know, but if she had to find a babysitter and eat the sugar, whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, it sounds annoying. <laughs> you don't think an Irish babysitter, all you do is go to the woods and you rip, oh, off, a piece of, <laughs> you rip off a piece of moss and one falls out. A little lady. <laughs> I'll watch her for you. And then she hides her and you can never find her again. All right. We love you, Beth. Beth Stelling, I love you the too. best. The be best Stelling. <laughs>